Narcolepsy is a, uh, an interesting disorder that's getting a lot of attention these days. Uh, there's far more interest in it because people are recognizing it more, even though there's still a very long delay from the onset of symptoms to the time of diagnosis. Part of that delay is because physicians are not that aware of the clinical features and uh, signs of narcolepsy. I mean, that most physicians are aware that narcolepsy causes excessive daytime sleepiness and that some patients have cataplexy, which is emotionally induced muscle weakness. But there are also many patients who don't have the cataplexy and just have sleepiness. And those are the ones that are more difficult to diagnose. The uh, main diagnostic uh, measure that we use is a multiple sleep latency test and we know that those who have the cataplexy generally have two or more sleep onset REM periods on that test and have a short uh, mean sleep latency of less than eight minutes. Although there are some patients who have that type 1 narcolepsy with cataplexy who don't have, uh, uh, don't meet those criteria, in which case usually the test needs to be repeated. But the type 2 narcoleptics also uh, diagnostic criteria involves a multiple sleep latency test and they're more likely to have a uh, falsely negative MSLT. So one is very much dependent upon the clinical features and, and uh, symptoms in those patients. Now, cataplexy is very difficult to diagnose. In some patients where they fall to the ground, if they laugh, it's very easy. But in patients who have subtle ev evidence of cataplexy, even the patient may not be aware that they're having it. It may be noticed by other family members. It may be just a little bobbing of the head or the head coming down, the eyelids coming down, flattening of the face. Sometimes it's a little dysarthria. So a patient's speaking and their voice becomes slurred. But it can be very subtle and, and for that reason, it's often missed and that adds to this delay in diagnosis of, of narcolepsy. But in addition to the two major symptoms of excessive sleepiness and cataplexy, patients with narcolepsy have other symptoms as well. They have a lot of disturbed nocturnal sleep. Many physicians are not aware of that. In fact, there are often patients who are misdiagnosed as having insomnia because they believe that the tiredness and fatigue and sleepiness during the day is due to the fact they're not sleeping correctly at night. So there is a need for physicians to realize that disturbed nocturnal sleep is part of the whole syndrome of narcolepsy. Also, there are other REM phenomena besides cataplexy. So a lot of vivid dreaming, bizarre dreams, nightmares, uh, dreaming in naps is a particular uh, feature that's very characteristic for narcolepsy. So these REM phenomena need to be asked about and the disturbed nocturnal sleep. And uh, when you couple that with the excessive daytime sleepiness, then it would lead you towards a diagnosis of narcolepsy. And if the patient can then be referred for the multiple sleep latency test, that may confirm the diagnosis. We definitely need new biomarkers for the diagnosis of narcolepsy because uh, about 20% are false negatives on the MSLT. So we need other measures. Unfortunately, we don't have them. People are looking at features in the nocturnal polysomnogram. The problem with that is that, of course, uh, sleep studies are not always readily available to physicians. You know, you require a sleep center and, and it's a little bit more labor intensive activity to do a nighttime sleep study. Ideally, we should have a blood test. There is some evidence that there is um, some markers that you can find in the blood that reflect some autoimmune response to the cells that are destroyed in narcolepsy called the hypocretin cells. It's not certainly ready for uh, clinical use at the present time, but it does provide the possibility that in the future that a, a blood test looking at some immune markers uh, could be very helpful in the diagnosis of narcolepsy.